All right, everybody. I get fired up every time I hear that. So hello, I'm Ryan Shefke, host of the Event Squadcast, a podcast for event professionals who want to keep up with the latest industry trends, best practices, and headlines in the event industry. So welcome, everybody. Hey, hey, and I'm Brad co-hosting today, and I want you to know we are very excited to introduce our guest, Lee Ali, the CEO at Expo Stars, and Lee is a trade show engagement specialist. We're, we're asking, what, what's that? That is someone who knows how to make events fun and engaging, Wildly, widely regarded as the go-to source for attendee engagement and lead generation at global trade show events. Lee has traveled to over 50 countries worldwide. And after 50 countries, who's counting, right? How fun. So uh, he's been doing trade shows and helping companies at staff events for years. And he's here to help you trade show pros optimize engagement at your events. Mr. Ali, welcome to the event Squadcast. How's it going today? Absolutely great. Thank you very much for having me, Ryan and Brad. I'm really excited to be here. Great, Lee. It's uh, wonderful to have you. I would add to the resume that Brad just shared. You have managed and staffed over 3,000 trade shows. So, wow, you've, you've traveled everywhere, but you are a man of uh, many talents and skills. And uh, you did share a little bit with me about that, but I know you've got uh, uh, a daughter, multiple multiple children, right? And uh, also you're a, a Reiki practitioner, a salsa dancer, and a Bruce Springsteen fan. So uh, that's incredible. I'd like our, our listeners to learn a little bit more about you on a personal note. Tell us how you got into Reiki. I had to actually look that up and learn how to pronounce it and what it is, but Share a little bit about that. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, Reiki is um, a form of transferring energy using your hands. And it's um, connecting with the universe and collecting that positive energy and letting your hands uh, push through that energy to, uh, to actually unblock the negative energy. So many a time when people become ill, stressed, um, what it means is that they actually have a blockage of energy in their body. And um, what a Reiki practitioner does is just uh, take that negative energy out and actually replace it with a positive energy so that the energies and your chakras and everything is actually flowing uh, like the universe intends it to. Yeah, that's great. Now, I know you do a ton of speaking um, you've spoken at Exhibitor Live, and you work with a lot of exhibitors to help them. Um, do you take any of that Reiki and apply these concepts there? I can imagine you're doing things like that. Well, what we try to do is bring a lot of positive energy to the booth. Okay, yeah. so and that's with uh, having people who are full of positive energy uh, engaging with the attendees, and it's creating. It's all ex exhibitions are all about creating that buzz. Uh, on the trade show floor and having that positive energy on the booth is absolutely vital and uh, it may not be Reiki but definitely having that positive energy on the booth is what we bring to trade shows. You know I've been walking around uh, been to multiple trade shows myself but it just blows me away sometimes I'll walk around and you'll see an exhibitor and they're you know sitting in their chair at the back of the booth and they're on their cell phone. Maybe I need to hold up my hands and transfer some Reiki. <laughs> All you need to do is smile, wave at them and get them to stand up and just have a conversation with you. Yeah. That'll get the energy going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've seen a lot of sitters, you know, st standing there like this, just waiting for somebody to engage. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when we walk past your booth, we always see a smile and, uh, and attractive people there waiting to welcome. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, Lee, I'd like to kind of shift over, and, and thanks for sharing a little bit on the personal side. appreciate that. Now, I know you spend a ton of time with exhibitors, right? Yeah. And I know the current landscape of exhibiting has changed. You know, at this moment, this is March of 2022, 
I feel like we're kind of moving past the pandemic and, you know, we're getting back to live events. But I want to take a moment and kind of reflect on the past couple of years. You know, how have things changed? How has the pandemic changed the exhibiting experience? Maybe you could comment on that. Yeah, it's uh, it has been obviously a very tough period uh, for the events industry. And mm -hmm. one of the key things that's actually happened uh, with exhibitors is that they're actually questioning uh, their spend. Okay, obviously they've had an opportunity to try out virtual events, uh, do virtual conferences and do uh, hybrid working and uh, all of this. And mm -hmm. what's happened is, uh, they've started asking the question, do I need to go and spend, uh, you know, 50,000 pounds or dollars uh, sending my team to the other side of the world when we can actually initiate the conversations uh, online? So uh, for that, um, the organizers now actually have a challenge in terms of attracting more exhibitors because they're thinking, okay, how can we do this smarter? Okay. Do we need to send our people abroad? Uh, are there other ways? And then you also have the conversation about uh, sustainability and, you know, having a greener planet. Do we need to take this heavy machinery across the, um, you know, across the world? Um, so there's a lot of these questions being uh, asked by exhibitors. And, uh, and the other thing is that there's a lot of uncertainty as well with exhibitors not sure where they actually are in that um, process of actually committing to events because they're not really sure what's actually going to, going to happen. And then on top of that, obviously, within the last couple of, uh, well, in the past month or so, we've obviously got the situation in uh, Ukraine, so yeah. which has added even more um, uncertainty as well. So I think uh, there's a lot of questions being asked at the moment, and uh, there is kind of a... Uh, like a void there if you like and i think we are we are seeing people coming out of it i mean we've in the last couple of months have got really busy where exhibitors have started committing to shows again and they've realized that uh, you know after all of that um ex ex exhibitions is all about human to human connections and i think <laughs> we've actually forgotten and we've actually craved that over the last couple of years mm -hmm. so and i think people are dying to get back uh, you know, to face-to-face -face events, but what they look like is uh, moving forward is the big uh, is the big question. Mm -hmm. And how do you think these in-person events are changing? I mean, yeah, you might have maybe less exhibitors, right? Maybe you've got the digital uh, component to it, so you hear a lot about hybrid. But do you think that um, in-person events are going to change any? For example, do you feel like there might be less handshaking and, uh, you know, different ways of, of uh, scanning badges or capturing leads or things like that. You know, do you feel like any of that is going to change in terms of your standard experience at live events? Yeah, of course, uh, exhibitors are going to have to think of ways uh, to make the connections more hygienic. OK, the standard yeah. experience needs to be more hygienic with, you know, um, having multiple uh, points and um, multiple ways of obviously cleaning and making sure that, um, you know, the experience, the touch points are uh, cleaned up like on the kiosks and so on, because uh, uh, that is, you know, one way of how COVID actually spreads. But um, mm -hmm. I think what you're going to have uh, is a lot more meaningful experiences, okay, where you'll actually have less visitors, but the visitors mm -hmm. that are there have a reason and a purpose to be actually at the event. So you're going to have much more engaging conversations. Um, so I think that is going to be the biggest shift in that the people who are actually at the event uh, want to have a conversation with you and see what you've got to offer. And they'll probably want to spend a bit more time with you as well. Yeah, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talk about the value of... Uh, you know, having to travel overseas and, and bring heavy equipment around and do things like that. Are there alternate ways that uh, people are using now to, uh, you know, offer engagements and different things? Remember, it used to be the old 
uh, not only the trade show booth, but maybe uh, like a, a spin the wheel type of game or something like that? What, what are some new methods people are using today? Yeah, what we're seeing is um, a big uh, shift towards interactive experiences. Obviously, we've had uh, uh, virtual reality with the headsets and we've had uh, the augmented reality coming in. And now, obviously, there's gamification, uh, which I know, Captello, you're doing a lot of. So, and I think what we're trying to see is um, that um, exhibitors want to engage with their attendees in a much more interactive and engaging way to actually educate them. And I think what was missing in the past with these games is that a lot of exhibitors were missing the point because they were focusing a lot on, on the actual games, but the attendees weren't actually getting the message. They weren't actually remembering, um, you know, they played a game. I'll give you a really good example. I went to a, an industry conference in London several weeks ago and I got invited to, um, as I was walking past, past the booth, I got invited to actually play a game. It was actually spin the wheel. Mm -hmm. And um, so I took part and I spun the wheel and I won a uh, diffuser. And uh, I said, thank you very much. And the lady said, well, thanks very much for playing and coming to our booth. And I walked away. And then I got a phone call about 10 days later saying, oh, you came to our booth and um, you were interested in our technology. And I said, well, the only conversation I had was to actually spin the wheel. And I wanted, mm. I wanted to diffuse it and I thank you very much for that, but I can't remember what you actually do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and this is uh, the point I'm trying to make is whatever interactivity <clears throat> or games um, or activity that you actually have on the booth, um, you've, got it, you've got to actually link it in uh, to how your product or service actually helps the attendee to actually improve or achieve a, a certain goal that they have. Yeah, and I think a lot has to do with a follow-up as well. So maybe yeah. you don't wait 10 days. Maybe it's not a phone call or the phone call should be very meaningful. And I know, yeah. and we'll get to this, Lee, I know you're chomping at the bit, but you have a, a TEO, your um, trade show engagement optimization strategy, which I want to dig into, but follow up is key for you, right? Um, yeah. I do want to go back and and one more question. You mentioned, you know, organizers are are going to have a hard time or are having a hard time getting exhibitors to come to their event. I like to give some nuggets and some tips to our audience. So, what would you say to an organizer? Um, what advice would you give them in, to help? get more exhibitors to their events? Sure. Uh, I think the key thing is, is to actually, rather than actually focusing on selling the floor space um, and getting a sale uh, for the square meters, uh, I think it's very important that organizers take the time to actually understand um, the exhibitor, okay? What are their business growth goals, okay? What is, uh, what, where do they, you know, what, who is their target audience? And actually look at their pain points and actually work with them in an interactive way. Uh, so it becomes a win-win situation. And, you know, turn the tables around and also ask them, you know, what can you bring to our show? Okay, and make it a two-way process. Uh, and I think that um, is very, very important. And then also look at maybe helping the exhibitors to be part of a community. OK, uh, so putting attendees and exhibitors together uh, and make it a 365 day community rather than just a, a three day event. Yeah, very good tip. You know, I know there are probably events that we should be exhibiting at, but, you know, I, I just get maybe random emails and I don't get a phone call. I don't feel like it's very yeah. personable. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. Yeah. Um, just like any kind of sales, it's got to be personable, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think. Um, in the trade show industry, the biggest mistake that we all make as exhibitors, as organizers, and even service providers is that we tend to focus on our own services first, okay? Um, and uh, the sales has actually changed over the last few years where um, there's a big shift from the 1960s and 70s where, you know, you get used to get presentations and uh, first about the company. But now, the way um, effective sales is, is that 
you've got to be a listener first uh, and a seller second. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, what you've got to have is a very empathetic approach to actually understanding um, your customers or your target audience's goals uh, first before you actually go in and pitch something. And it's got to be tailored as well. You can't just have an off-the-shelf solution and say, this is the best solution for you, where the customer might not even need 60% of that solution. So yeah. why, not, why not give them what they actually want? Spot on. Um, speaking of listening, you obviously have been listening to a lot of exhibitors and hearing and seeing the struggles they've gone through. And that led you, Lee, to create, as I mentioned, this TEO, this trade show engagement optimization. So let's kind of turn the page here in our conversation. Help everybody understand what inspired you to create TEO. Well, um, as you know, as business owners, we get bombarded with a lot of agencies out there trying to sell us stuff. So, and over the last few years, um, We've had SEO, and as mm -hmm. you know, uh, companies are now spending millions and millions of pounds on their SEO strategy, okay? And trade shows, if you look at trade shows, uh, you, could actually rep you could actually see your booth as your website, but in a live environment, okay? Um, so why not uh, take the same time and effort uh, to focus on... Um, you know, getting your trade show optimized, just like you do for your website, okay? So mm -hmm. you know uh, how many visitors you got every day on your website, you know, where they came from, where they're going to go, what page they went from, uh, you know, what page they exited to. Uh, so you know all of this stuff. So why not actually mm -hmm. take the same time and effort to actually understand what you're going to do with your trade show? So it actually starts, you know, looking at how you're going to attract people to the to your trade show, who's going to be your target audience. Um, so we can have very similar conversation as to you would have with an SEO consultant uh, talking about, you know, how you're going to optimize your trade show. Yeah. And, you know, I and Brad, you probably know this better than anybody, but you do our SEO and our paid advertising and all of that. And, um, and, and you do a great job with that. But I think a lot of marketers don't measure, um, you know, the results, right? Don't measure their efforts. So are they getting a return on their SEO or figuring out where their leads came from? And I know that, you know, as part of your TEO here, um, Lee, you've got, you know, your KPI. So basically you're, you're saying, hey, it's really important that you measure, uh, you know, what you do at, at your trade shows, right? And, and yeah. establish some very uh, key KPIs. So on that note, what would you say, um, Lee, and I, and I know it probably varies, right? But if you were to give some advice to an exhibitor, right, who maybe it's their first time exhibiting or they don't really have a good process and a good way to measure their KPIs. What do you think they should measure? You know, what are the top two or three things that they should always look to measure after they exhibit? Sure. Uh, I think the first thing to measure is um, how many qualified leads that they actually have. Now, uh, in the trade world, we have two phenomenons. Okay. One is, um, the phenomenon of can I scan your badge and collecting as much data as possible, uh, which is like a capture all thing. And then um, obviously call everyone up and hopefully some of it might stick. Okay. Then the other phenomenon is just looking at the qualified leads. Okay. You can have those two approaches side by side and I can pretty much um, guarantee that you know based on the past year 14 years experience it's the quality that counts not the quantity mm -hmm. okay so always focus on uh, how many qualified leads that you got based on the criteria that you set out of who your target audience is okay so that's a key thing and then obviously look at your when you're looking at uh, your follow-up process um is to look at you know all your key sales stages. Where did they drop out? Okay, because without knowing where people are actually dropping out in the sales process, you're not going to know how to actually improve your sales process. So 
um, it's very, very important to look at, you know, what is, uh, I mean, what products got the most um, uh, traction. So if you have a multiple services uh, that you're offering on the trade show booth, um, have a tick box and ask people which products are you interested in. So if you have five products and three of them got more traction, then you actually know for your future trade show that the other two, um, you know, didn't really do any um, any good. So just focus on the three that really got a lot of attention. So it's a lot of, I mean, it all boils down to why you're exhibiting in the first place and then looking at, you know, what metrics you're actually going to measure. Yeah, very helpful. Um, and, you know, I, I personally feel like oftentimes where companies drop the ball is in that follow-up. So, you know, let's say, right, I'll humor you for a second, you know, you do a great job collecting your leads and, and you, yeah. you know, you tick the boxes for what product or service they're interested in. But then, you know, you've got your event team and sometimes it's not the same marketing team at a big company. Yeah. It's a, their own, no, team. own team. You've got the event team, you've got the marketing team, you've got the sales team. How, and a lot of times, again, you go to the event, great. Oh, I had a wonderful show. And then, you know, you, you mismanage your leads, right? There's no clear process. What advice do you have? What do you see? You know, where do you see companies kind of failing in that handoff, that follow-up process, right? And, and what yeah. advice do you have to improve that process? Yeah. So the follow-up process always fails because of the lack of joined up thinking, okay? Because uh, when you look at the trade show uh, strategy, um, very often, like you mentioned, there is a lot of stakeholders. So you have your sales team, you have your event management team, you have your marketing, then you have the executive management as well. So, um, and between them, they all obviously focus on their little bits. Um, so somebody at the very beginning what needs to happen is take responsibility for the most important part, which is the follow-up process. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. the four departments need to come together and say, look at, right, who's going to take charge of the follow-up process? And then actually have a clear um, system, okay, not only to actually have a follow-up process, but to also bridge the gap between the conversation on the booth and then what the next step is, okay? This is where the big failure is. Um, you so can use your diffuser as the example, right? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Your scenario. Absolutely. I mean, it, yeah. you, you might pass the lead on, but then there's no yeah. transfer of information. So the conversation feels broken, right? Yeah. It's got to yeah. be a consistent yeah. conversation where that information is being relayed. Yeah. yeah, and one of the best tips I can give to exhibitors uh, to enable a very good follow-up system is to, when they're actually having a conversation uh, with the prospect um, on the booth, the best way to bridge that gap is to actually ask them, right, what do you want to happen next? Do you want us to give you a call? Do you want us to send you an email? Do you want us to invite you to a, a webinar? Okay, what is it that you want from us? Okay, and put the emphasis on them. Because if you, if you actually get their permission, guess what? They'll be expecting your phone call. They'll be expecting your email. And you don't have that cold call uh, mm -hmm. mentality uh, when you have that conversation, even seven days after the event. Yeah, I think, you know, Lee, you know, we've kind of obsessed over the lead capture and lead retrieval process. A few things that I just want to share that we learned that we actually implemented into our platform. You know, number one, for the people, when you ask them, oh, I need follow up, right? If they say that they're an urgent lead. Well, we we added the ability to schedule a meeting right there and then into yeah. the platform. I think another really cool thing that we did um, which really every exhibitor should do is, you know, ca collect audio, right? You know, so yeah. it, if I'm yeah. meeting you, you know, I might need to, while everything is fresh in your head, how many times do we go back and we forget what's happening? We get lost, sidetracked. We got to fill in our expense reports. We can't think, yeah. right? So yeah. while we're right there, it's, it's fresh in our mind, record a little audio clip and, and then that gets passed on. So 
to your yeah. point about the handoff and the transfer of information, man, if, if Lee captured a lead and gave it to me and I can just play Lee's audio note and he tells me everything, you know, those are helpful things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And it's a great tool, especially when you have um, um, people taking over the leads. Okay. So you might have the yeah. marketing team on your stand um, and having the ability to actually record a voice memo uh, is absolutely brilliant because, um, you know, you can capture the information right there and then. And it's, it's more comprehensive than trying to type out uh, you know, two or three paragraphs. Yeah, I think if when you won that diffuser, it was probably somebody else calling, right, to follow up to tell you congrats, yeah. and and not yeah. the same person you may have met. So, but hey, back to you and your and your TEO. Um, just to drill into one area, you know, you you talk about helping your booth staff. You know, that's one key area. And you mentioned something that piqued my interest, which was how will you motivate and reward. Uh, your booth staff for for meeting their objectives. What do you what have you seen, or what would you recommend as the best kind of reward you can give your staff? Uh, it all depends on the team and what they're motivated by, and you need to ask that question first. Is what would be a great celebration if we actually met our objectives uh, at the trade show? All right, because if people aren't motivated by a big uh, you know dinner. Uh, they don't really want to spend time with the rest of the teammates. So you've got to ask them, you know, what is going to motivate them uh, to actually achieve those personal objectives? And it's got to be based around what they want. As management, we're all sometimes guilty of forcing things on people and they don't want that. Okay. So I think it's very important to actually have that open, honest conversation with them and say, look, guys, we're going to have. Uh, these um, really tough targets, okay, we want to achieve them, we want to reward you, what is it that you want to get out of it, get out of the experience, okay? And then just have a just have a general consensus, whether it's a big slap-up meal, uh, whether it's, you know, going out and having, a, uh, you know, a paintball uh, game or something like that. Um, uh, ask your team's opinion first. I was thinking free Reiki lessons for everybody. <laughs> that would be great yeah <laughs> but only if they want it only if they yeah, want it. only if they want it but when i read that lee i was kind of thinking it was more on the individual level so you, this is kind of interesting because you're talking about you know rewarding the entire team for achieving a goal whether that's you know number of qualified leads or what have you uh, but have you ever seen um, scenarios where it's maybe you know you create kind of that bullpen environment where you might say, hey, the person who captures the most leads, you know, you get a reward of some sort. Yeah, from my past experience in sales, that kind of um, motivates the wrong kind of behavior. Um, so um, because people, they want to be uh, at the top of the tree and they want to take shortcuts to get to that top of the tree. Okay. When you're in a trade show environment, what you've got to do is look at it from a team perspective because everybody has got to be on the same uh, trajectory on the same uh, wavelength. Okay. Mm -hmm. And having a top superstar sometimes can actually create um, some kind of resentment as well. Mm -hmm. And they will say, Oh, this guy's a superstar. He's won the prize already. I've got no chance. So, you know, I'll just go and do my own thing. But if you do it as a team, uh, everybody is pulling in the same direction. They're more supportive of each other um, and it drives the right kind of behavior. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, good. So, you know, as I mentioned, Lee, I've got your, your TEO, you know, printed out here and I know people can't yeah. see it, um, but you, you've got, you know, your five stages here, right? And And I think this is great. I mean, even for us, if we're exhibiting to kind of go through, get our team together. These are all in the form of questions, right? So we could ask ourselves these yeah. questions. But my question back to you, Lee, is how, how does an exhibitor execute this particular TEO strategy? Do they come consult with you? Do they print this out and get together as a team? Um, what's the best way to actually execute and apply this 
TEO strategy. And by the way, if you need to, again, comment more on that particular strategy for, for our audience, feel free to. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, just to summarize the TEO strategy, there's five pillars that we look at. Uh, obviously, number one is your overall strategy, the exhibition strategy. Uh, number two is your attendee journey. Okay, what does that look like? Number three is selecting the right booth staff. And number four, your KPI measurement, looking at what metrics you're going to uh, look at and what you're going to focus on. And then obviously the fifth uh, pillar is the follow-up process. Now, you, the best way to look at this is either companies can actually get all the stakeholders um, in the, involved in the engagement process, sorry, in the exhibition process and come together as a team and ask these questions between them and actually have a workshop. And that's a really good way of doing it. But sometimes uh, with exhibitors, um, it's very easy to fall into the trap of doing the same things over and over again. Uh, so sometimes it's better to bring in an outsider uh, and actually facilitate this conversation and bring new ideas to the table. And this is what we're about at Expo Stars, is looking at a different way of exhibiting. And you'll notice, uh, Ryan, that on the sheet, um, there is nothing, we don't make any mention of your trade show booth. <laughs> and why is that? Is that on purpose? It is because exhibiting is all about the face-to-face -face connection with your audience, okay? And it's a trap that we all fall into thinking that uh, we'll build a beautiful booth and everyone will come. And we'll get loads of leads. Brad, we need it. to rethink our 10 by 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we just laid down some major, some major money. But yeah, we... But we did that because, you know, you want to attract them, you want to get them in there. And then you have that good relationship started when you get in there. <laughs> but but I think, um, you know, you're you're spot on. I mean, I think from a TEO perspective, you know, many times, Lee, I've thought, why even have a booth? Just rent the space. Yeah. You know, you need the real estate. And it's about the humans and what can the humans do with each other, really? Yeah. Yeah. And how can you bring out the best in those in the humans and the human conversations, right? Yeah. Uh, Lee, hey, thank you so much. You know, my my goal here, our goal is really to kind of extract some nuggets that are useful and meaningful for our audience. So I want to thank you for for coming on to the event Squadcast, um, Lee. If people want more information on the uh, on the TEO strategy and Expo Stars, where where do they go? They can come to my LinkedIn, first of all. Uh, I'm very active on there with lots of useful tips and hints on how to optimize your exhibiting. So uh, they can look up Lee Alley at Expo Stars. Um, and then obviously they can come to our website, www.expostars.com. Um, so, and they, will, they can just Google us at Expo Stars. And um, there's a lot of content that we have on the website on, I think, if people, um, uh, you know, don't find us, then I need to fire my uh, SEO team. <laughs> yeah, forget, forget the SEO. Get some good money on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Hey, I want to just say thank you, Lee, for your time, for joining us today. Everybody out there, for more information on Lee's TEO documentation too, and to play our game of the month, you can visit us online. Uh, we're featuring Lee Ali and Expo Stars in a gamification. You can have chances to win gift cards and prizes. So please uh, catch us online at captello.com forward slash event squadcast. And of course, you can tune into the event squadcast every month on the third Friday. We want you to follow and like Captello on LinkedIn where you can find the most recent episodes and upcoming episodes uh, and uh, learn how to make your events an ROI success, a crushing success every time. Ryan. All right, great. Well, thank you, Lee. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next event squadcast. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.